All right, guys, welcome to part one of Moon Patrol. Rebuild, refurbish, repair. What's the other one? <sighs> but anyways, um, see what we've got going on here. So I already started. I was tearing uh, this old... Uh, control panel overlay and I finally found the screws that was holding on this metal plate so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this metal plate uh, all the buttonholes are in the right location for moon patrol they still got their leaf switches in there so we're good there and we got this guy here um, I'm going to take this panel to the local uh, sheet metal shop and I'm gonna have them make me the same you know size and put these holes right where they all are at leaving this one uh, untouched so I can put the little two-way slot in myself and I'll also re-drill and countersink the uh, the the place where the screws hold the panel on I'll do that myself so I'm going to go ahead and work on tearing this off and we'll check it out after it's off. Okay, so have the plate off here. So you can see this is a screw hole to hold the uh, panel down. And this is just a drilled hole that somebody ruined it with. So what I'm going to do, I think, there's the T-nuts for the joystick. Um, you got this half moon where they drilled out, uh, for the other joystick. And then you got these holes where they had this joystick in there. And I don't even know, this is just some freaking piece of crap. So from arcade shop, I bought this. So this is going to go in here. I went to the hardware to get the hardware, so this comes completely unassembled with no hardware whatsoever. So if any of you ever get this, uh, these are 632, number 6 screw, number 6 bolt with 32 threads per inch, and then you'll need some 632 long enough to go through both, um, oh, leaf switches and then these are I think these are 10 1032s bolts I got them extra long because I can trim them off and new t-nuts that are gonna have to replace these ones so I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm gonna take this in the house with a little bit of bondo I had left from last year and I'm gonna patch this stuff up the best I can you know, I really don't need to. The new steel plate will cover everything, but uh, I'm just going to patch it up. I I'll feel good about it. How about that? All right. All right, gentlemen and ladies, maybe. But anyways, um, that's where it's going to sit. It's not really messed up on the backside, so this is sitting right where it needs to. Depth wise, you can see there's a little ridge in between the top of this wood and the top of that steel. That is where the dust cover will ride, so we'll be good there. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to take this control panel off, take it in downstairs, maybe to my wood room, and uh, strip the artwork off and, and uh, bondo up all the unnecessary holes. And then, uh, you know, sand it down. I got to be real careful around this ledge right here. Because I don't want to, you don't want to um, take that down. So anytime I sand up around this corner, I'll need to have the steel plate on so it, it acts as a buffer. So I'm not gouging too much into the wood. And, and right here is going to have to be repaired with some Bondo to build this ledge back up. So the plate will also need to be installed for that. 
So, if I come across anything interesting, I'll uh, show it on film, guys. Thanks for being patient on this one. Okay, guys. One other thing. Um, you can see that there's an existing wiring harness here. Um, I do not have the patience to sort through other people's frickin' messes, so... I will completely remove every bit of wiring from this cabinet and start over myself. I prefer to do it that way because I know what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. So it makes sense to me and I'm not digging through other people's rat nest. I don't know what anybody's done to this harness and how they've hacked it. So I will literally start making my own harness with my own, you know, from the PCB to the power supply to the controls to the monitor to the marquee, everything will just be rewired myself. I'll try to make a better video of that. Harbor Freight Special here. So I got these uh, bits. I've used these bits in the past to start pilot holes because, as you can see, these tips are really stout and short and uh, come off a really heavy shank. So when you start these into a fresh, you know, a fresh flat piece of steel, they don't walk as much as a big long drill bit does, if that makes sense. But you can also see on here that uh, after the initial hole, there is a chamfering that goes on or like um, a countersink. So I'm going to try to recreate these screw holes right here in this old panel just to see if it works. So I'm going to drill some random holes in here to uh, basically see if I can make the right countersink hole. So when I get the new metal piece made, I can go ahead and then center punch all these holes that need to be made and then use this to drill and counter sink the hole if that makes sense guys that's my plan but I don't know if it's gonna work okay so all the steel shavings stuck to the the sticky that's still here so you can see that maybe not but um, it's down in there flush or maybe even counter sunk a little more than flush so it is very possible to recreate those holes with that and um, that's what I'm going to use to drill the uh, 10 holes around here that, that hold this to the wood. You can see on the back side here this hole right here in the center and this hole right here. That's a factory hole right here. Here's the hole I drilled. And you can see that, at least on the back side, they're relatively the same. They ended up being the same diameter. So, let's go take a look at what I used here. So, just used that drill in my drill press here. And, uh... Alright. Now you see, this more stout bit don't walk. Now the, the actual hole is started, now you're going to start into the counter sand. That's exactly, man, this thing's horrible with all the sticky stuff on here. So that is your countersunk hole, like up here. So when the screw goes in, it's flush with the rest of the panel, and then your overlay can go on 
and you don't know there's a screw under there. Removed the T-nuts from, from this um, control panel here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start removing the leaf switches. And then I'm going to mix up some Bondo and start filling in all of the crap. And hopefully it turns out and I don't make a big giant mess. But I can almost guarantee I'm going to make a big giant mess. But it'll work out in the end. Hopefully. Alright. What I'm going to do here, I think, is while my Bondo is drying up, I'm going to go get me some citrus strip and I'm going to brush onto this tacky glue stuff so it can, uh, I'm going to brush it on pretty decent. Then I'm going to take a paper, or uh, excuse me, um, like a plastic trash bag and I'm going to drape over it to help keep the fumes in on, uh, on this sticky stuff and it'll help uh, dissolve it and then I should be able to kind of like take something like this and just scrape it off that's the plan anyways we'll see how it works all right guys so I got it bonded now I got some citrus strip on the tacky area I don't want to sit it there too long as I don't want the wood to get wet but I need to let it sit there long enough to <sighs> remove the sticky stuff from the wood at least enough so I can sand it so it ends up being wood anyways I'm going to cover this now with a plastic bag, probably let it sit a few hours, and then come down and see if I can remove any of the glue. Alright, just so you can see, I basically just got a trash bag over it. Helps keep the fumes. I think it works better when it's covered like this, especially with coin doors. You get them nice and heavy like that. Put them in a garbage bag and man, a day later you, you just come there and that, it's just falling off. Alright, uh, as you can see it's taken some of the glue off. But it hasn't lifted at all yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put another layer of this on here. Because you can see how some of it's dried. And... Um, then we will uh, cover it back up and uh, check in the morning. It, it's been down here covered up for like two hours, so um, hopefully we can get it to come up. If I can get most of the sticky stuff off to where there's just another backing on there, I might be able to sand that off, but I got to get some of this glue off or I'm just going to keep plugging up sandpaper. All right, guys. Got coat two on, uh, scraped all the, as, as much of the gummy glue off that would come off, and it's down to like a rubbery type material, so maybe it's a different layer of the uh, control panel overlay, and put a new coat on, so maybe, maybe that layer will get dissolved up some. Hopefully it gets thin enough I can sand it off. Okay guys, so it's the next morning. I I grabbed a little bit right there with the uh well you know Bondo spreader here and and uh it seems like it's coming up. So I'm gonna try to get all this off of here. I'm a little bit leery about like right here where the wood's kinda wet from uh the liquid. Uh, I'll probably do all my sanding and then if this is still wet, I'll probably run a hair dryer on it to, uh, you know, get any moisture out of the wood before it becomes ruined. Alright, so I was able to, to take off this much and this backside wasn't barely touched, as you can see. So I put a thin coat back on here. I gotta let it set a few more hours and hopefully I can get some more off. And then I'll start sanding. I need to go out and get my mouse sander anyway so I can, uh, I want to use that because of this ledge right here. Uh, it'll be less invasive than my six inch round orbital sander. Uh, so. 
Work continues, guys. All right, guys. It's been several hours later. Um, this is kind of what the stuff comes off like. It's like this glue, gluey rubber stuff. And it's just totally disgusting. Well, we're getting her stripped down to bare wood. Uh, after I get all this boogers cleaned up here, um, I'm going to take some sandpaper to it and probably plug up a whole bunch. Okay, so now I have everything sanded down with the 80 grit, okay? I'm going to go over it one more time with like 180 or 150 or something. But here's the excess glue that the sandpaper took off. It feels pretty much all like wood now. It don't look like it, but it feels like it. You can tell it was sanded with 80 grit. So I'm gonna go ahead and smooth it out now and probably ruin a couple pads in the process. Still picking up some glue, I'd imagine. Um, I'm gonna router recess these holes back out with a router and install the new T-nuts and then uh, tomorrow I'll have to take the steel to go be remade and um, probably do a couple more clips here and this will be the end of this video so uh, I'll be back on. Alright guys I'm trying to drill this Bondo out by hand because well I'm just too lazy to go get my drill. It seems to be cutting pretty good, so I'm just going to finish drilling out these holes by hand. So, just a cool tip. Alright, fellers. Got my T-nuts in. Uh, joystick uh, uh, bracket. Whatever you want to call it. Lines up nicely with these four holes. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and end this video here, guys. Uh, this is completely ready for, uh, it's coat of paint. I'm just going to spray it down a couple coats of flat black. Uh, I'm going to take the steel panel in and I have a reproduction made. Uh, next video we'll be drilling the holes in the steel panel. Uh, these ones got kind of ruined from them drilling holes right beside it so when i drill this one it'll be out here a little bit as well as this one so it's into good wood um so yeah we're gonna go get the steel panel made we'll uh, have to cut out the slot right here for the joystick handle and drill the 10 holes for the screws and then uh, I'm going to paint this. And then uh, I have a piece of artwork to put on it. So um, it's going to work out great, guys. Um, like, subscribe, share, shit like that. See you on the next one. Peace. Oh, wait. There's the inside, too, guys. I know it looks all bonded, but that's how many uh, nasty spots there was. It'll look good under paint.